My name is Pat Hodgel. Um, I write under PC Hodgel. I guess you could say that the whole process began with a lot of daydreaming as a child. My grandmother was bringing me up. There were no other children around, so I spent a lot of time fantasizing. I didn't really start writing, per se, until between college and graduate school, though. Uh, I guess I was just afraid that it would turn out I couldn't do it. And since I had pretty much planned my whole life as being a writer, that was a kind of a frightening uh, possibility. So I went to a writer's workshop and uh, met other writers for the first time and met other publishers. Uh, sold my first story to one of them, which was very encouraging. The first story came out in 1976. Uh, the first novel came out in 82. These are all part of the same series. Uh, but I try to make each one as much as possible a standalone. Not that they can be at this point, obviously, because there is so much that's gone into each one. Well, I do most of my rough drafts uh, on a notepad, line notepad with a pen. Just scroll it down. Usually in the present tense, for some reason that has a more immediate feeling, though I change it to past tense when I'm actually writing. But I did really grow up with the idea of uh, the tacit ta feeling of, of the, the pen and the paper and um, seeing the words form that way. Because I came to computers and whatnot late, uh, I'm now I'm finally starting to write a little bit on laptops and whatnot. Um, after I've done the first draft on the theme paper, then I will sit down with my laptop and uh, try to make some sense out of it. I also have a writing journal on the laptop, which is almost as long as the book. So sometimes when I'm having difficulty coming up with a plot, I can't figure out how events fit together. I will write out on little pieces of paper what happens when it happens. Well, not necessarily when it happens, because that's what I figure out when I put it on a piece of paper. Therefore, it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle for me. I was reading all of these stories so far just because as I'm getting closer to the end, I've got to figure out what have I covered, what have I tied together, what do I still have to tie together, what are the loose ends. I'm in the process of skimming through the novel so far. And I've just come to a section which I don't remember at all, which is a little bit disconcerting. You know, parts of this I remember so very clearly, and other parts just sort of jump out at me. And then I have to figure out what I was trying to say and whether I actually said it or not, which in a way is good because it means I have to step back and look at it as a reader as opposed to a writer. Am I making sense? Is this writer who is me um, being coherent? It's particularly difficult with fantasy because there are so many elements that are up for grabs. I mean, it's an imaginary world, it's imaginary people, it's imaginary situations. They have to be coherent. They also have to resonate properly. I mean, you, you get a whole bunch of tools when you're writing fantasy. And if you don't really use them properly, they end up by being stereotypes and cliches. She's wearing amber beads. One of them melts. There's a fly trapped in it that escapes, and twiddles its legs, and experimentally flies away. I love fantasy. Let's see, chapter 13, Death and Life. Yeah, I notice a lot of people don't use chapter titles anymore. It would be easier not to, but for me, the chapter title is almost like the theme of the chapter. Something to keep turning back to to see if I'm still on course and I'm still telling the story that I want to. Slightly artificial, but it, on the other hand, all of writing is, an artif is creating an artifact. All right, this is a... Well, they're all tricky chapters, but this was a particularly tricky one. Um, and I was really at a standstill for a while there until I talked it out with a friend. I find it really useful to be able to 
talk to someone who knows the stories and can see where I'm tripping up and where I need to strengthen things. And this particular reader is particularly good at coming up with ideas, which helped me a lot. She also reads over the materials to make sure that I'm spelling everything correctly, which frequently I don't. Um, so what I usually do is to uh, note out the general outline of what I want to accomplish. Then I have to come up with the specific details that will actually let me do that. Another thing that I do is make long lists to myself, mostly in my writing journal. And whereas I hold a lot of things in my head, I can't hold everything. I mean, I've spent my entire life pretty much wrapped around this particular story. It's a story I became a writer in order to write. Um, it began, you know, quasi autobiographical in a fantasy sense. I mean, she's my alter ego. And so I guess to tell her story was to tell my story.